up towards the top, you'll see a uh, switch that says battery. Or it says bat. Yep. Switch that up. All right. The switch, the switch next to it, generator. Switch it up. The switch next to it, engine ST. Switch that to up. That warning. To warning. Start your engine. Your warning. 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 Reset it on warning. the panel. And it just kicked me out. Yeah, me too. Everybody. I think it kicked us all out. Yep. Yep. Uh, sorry, I broke your server. Damn it, man. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Balder here, and I am in the Harrier. This is a plane that I really wanted to get into. However, because there weren't any training missions, I wasn't really able to figure out uh, what I was doing. So, a big thanks to the people on the 59th, um, 59th Squadron, who showed me how to get this thing up and running. I really can't thank you guys enough. And... I'm just going to be taking this thing out for a little uh, joyride. I'm going to be uh, fighting. It does have some weapons. So something that I could definitely use. But either way, this is a very interesting plane. It was uh, designed by Hawker Sidley in the 1960s, late 60s, and it saw quite a bit of combat in its service life. In fact, it's still in service today with the Marines, though they're trying to replace it with the F-35. Uh, basically, this thing served in both Iraq wars, it served in Afghanistan, and on top of that, it also uh, served in the Falklands, which is probably its most famous role. It's kind of debut. So this thing is primarily an air-to-ground attacker, but it the way that it really shines is just how versatile it is. This jet is designed to uh, do a vertical takeoff and landing VTOL. And what that basically means is that it is a it is a hover jet. It can take off and land vertically. Uh, it does depend. Sometimes it weighs too much. I think uh, this plane might weigh a little bit too much. Uh, we'll find out. But either way, I am going to be taking this thing off from this tiny little carrier out in the middle of the Black Sea. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get things started. The startup process is actually pretty easy. What? A lot easier than I thought it would be. And oh, track IR, quit being so jittery. All right. Now this is a part where people really get stuck on. So that brake goes off, and that thing opens. All right, gonna wait for that thing to spool up. All right, I'm gonna hold down the brake until this thing gets up to a nice 280 percent RPM. And, I don't know, I find it weird that they base the measurement off of uh, R, um, RPM percentages and not RPMs themselves. But either way, we got that thing turned on, so just going to flip all the switches as such. The system goes on, the volume goes on as well. Brightness goes on, it should go on all the way. Same with the volume. And same with this one. That one doesn't really need to be on, but oh whatever. I'm gonna turn the RWR on, the SP to auto. I keep forgetting what that thing is. Again, I am still pretty new to this, so forgive me if I seem pretty ignorant of what I'm doing, but let's go ahead and see if we can get the thing uh, off the ground. Well, let's first put all this stuff on. And...
And oh, there we go. Landing gear, landing gear. Landing gear. Has there ever been a sexier takeoff than that? Most likely not. Oh, good God, I love doing that. So, the Harrier. It is definitely not the fastest in the world. Not by a long shot. In fact, I don't think it can go supersonic, but in reality, it doesn't need to. Whatever. Turn the volume down a little bit. It is, for the most part, an air-to-ground fighter. And it does its job very well. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say A-10 well, but it's definitely a good fighter. So let's see if I can get this thing going. So Master Arms on. Let's see. The stores. Let's go ahead and select guys. Alright, and there should be an air-to-ground mode. Ah, did I forget how to do that already? Oh, nope, we're good. So, there are a few things that you need to take into consideration before you fly the Harrier. The biggest uh, consideration is that it does have a very weird takeoff. Let's say that you're doing a normal takeoff. It is not going to... Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to be kind of weird because you actually adjust the uh, nozzle, the hover nozzle, to uh, take off even if you're uh, doing a rolling takeoff, because otherwise you are going to strike the tail. And uh, let's go ahead and... Switch that to auto, and oh boy. Now that definitely got us going. So this thing, I would say it is actually pretty maneuverable. Oh yes, it does actually remind me. So I once did a video of uh, Combat Air Patrol 2, which I don't think is a bad simulator, though definitely not really realistic in a sense. Though, with that said, I do remember there was a comment that I was making about the angle of attack, and they said, well, hey, there's a flight computer. That's going to prevent you from stalling, right? No, it's not. It's not going to prevent me from stalling. So there is a bit of um, lack of realism on that, but that's something I feel like I should have, like I really wanted to point out when first trying this, but oh, I'm glad I could get into the Harrier. A sexy plane, nonetheless. Wait, is that really Batumi? Is that what Batumi looks like, as opposed to what we've been seeing with the uh, autogen of 1.5? It seems pretty sparsely populated, but maybe that's the point? Can't imagine why, though. Yeah, we got a lot of rockets. They aren't really the best rockets, I should say, for taking out vehicles. They are better for taking out infantry. 
but the targets that I'm going to go after aren't exactly armored, so I don't think that's going to be much of a problem. Now, either I'm going to do really well at strafing, or this is going to suck royally, but you know, I'll never know until I try. So we're going to the old, trustworthy, abandoned airstrip, and that feels so weird seeing just how uh, it looks kind of barren, but maybe that's the point. That maybe this is rural Georgia, or uh, Boonies, Georgia, I should say. Go ahead and get my little uh, guard up. Nav away. And let's go ahead and um, line ourselves up a bit better. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Now I need to wait for that thing to go down. Or maybe it's not going to go down. Huh. What did I do wrong? Hang on. I think I might have some technical difficulties going on here. All right, let's go ahead and try this again. Altitude's a little bit higher than um, last time, but I don't think that'll be much of an issue. Oh yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. Of course, these are anti-infantry rockets, not really designed for vehicles, but with soft targets like this, I don't think that'll be too much of a problem. Oh, I Whether or not I have good results is, um... I don't know, results may vary when it comes to these rockets. I'm pretty sure if I chose a more uh, high exp or a higher explosive rounds, that wouldn't be too much of an issue. Now, that was kind of close to the ground, not going to lie. I don't know. I have quite a few rockets left, so... Not too concerned, not horribly concerned. That should have gotten him. Oh wow, these are weak ass rockets. I'm not gonna lie. Either that or I have terrible aim. Or both.
Hey, it's gone. Now, as you can tell, this thing is quite a natural aircraft. It definitely knows how to turn. It definitely knows how to uh, stay stable in said turn. And at no point do I really feel like I don't have any control of this aircraft. I ironically say as I make sure that I have enough fuel, but still the point remains. This thing was absolutely deadly, and it's still in use today by the Marines. Too bad it's getting replaced by the F-35. I mean, I understand, sometimes the military makes mistakes. Just like I made the mistake of not mapping this fucking, uh... Pickle switch to my Totas, but yeah, well. All right, that should have. Oh yeah, that did the job. Alright, so, there are no more enemies. Still, we have a bit of ammunition, so... I think it would be a good idea just to jettison them all. There we go, problem solved. That way this thing becomes way more maneuverable. Now, jokes aside, I really wonder what the TAC-V is going to show me when, uh, when I take a look to see where those things land. Yeah, that's what like, I'll really worry about. Oh wow, I still have a bit of H2O left. So, I'm not going to do the most spectacular landing, or the most spectacular approach for landing. I'm pretty sure I'll do fine with landing, because this thing is quite easy. When it comes to landing. Um, if you know what, you do, what you're doing. Of course, every time I do land, it does feel like it's hard. Um, it was a hard landing, but I haven't really come across any issues like that. Any major issues, I should say. So, landing gear, landing gear.
I'll be landing straight into the sea breeze. Oh yeah, I do see the little uh, smoke trail that the carrier has. That's kind of cool. But uh, I swear that I have no idea how to land this stupid thing. Now, maybe I should make another video on uh, me attempting to land on the said carrier, but oh, it's going to be... It's going to be interesting. That's all I can say. Um, if you've ever seen my embarrassing videos of me in a helicopter, you will probably know that I am not really good with that type of uh, flying. Aircraft are airplanes are my specialty, not really air, um, not really helicopters. And VTOL, um, I know it's different, but it does feel pretty similar to a helicopter when I'm using it. So, I mean, just some thoughts that I've had. I'm going a little, a little... Let's go in a little fast. It always sounds like a pretty hard landing whenever I land this thing. So I don't know if I tail strike or what. But either way, it is one hell of a plane. And one of the things that I really pointed out, or would like pointing out, is that this is one of those planes that I feel a lot of the DCS community wanted. It's uh, one of the jets that are practical. It could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Flaming Cliffs planes. And yeah, it's actually practical in, let's say, a multiplayer server where you have an objective to take out ground forces. And yeah, I mean, I know the Mirage can kind of do it, but its BVR capabilities are... We don't talk, we don't like talking about it. But let's go ahead and park ourselves at our discretion. How about we do that? There we go. The Harrier, everybody. An honestly kick-ass plane. Can't recommend it enough. <laughs> 